In 1847, the town of Fairfield, Iowa was incorporated, with Barnett Ristein as its mayor. It had three grocery stores, six dry goods stores, two drug stores, eight cabinet and wheelwright shops, three blacksmiths, two harness makers, three tailors, two chair makers, two cooper shops, one carding machine, one tin shop, and one gunsmith. And on June 12, 1847, Fairfield got its first newspaper, the Iowa Sentinel. By 1853, the upstart Fairfield Ledger had gained important ground under the direction of publisher William W. Junkin. Junkin starts working for the Ledger as its editor in 1853, and by the following year, he's the sole owner. When he starts his career in Fairfield, he's writing very strongly worded editorials against slavery's expansion into the territories and into new states. Probably not going over well with large segments of the town, but he sticks to his guns. I mean, you can tell that he is very much a man of principle. But not everyone thought like Junkin. David Sheward, who had previously published the Iowa Sentinel in Fairfield, returned in 1861 and began publishing a rival newspaper, The Constitution and Union. Well, David Sheward uh, is remembered today primarily as uh, a martyr for the cause of freedom of the press. He uh, was opposed to the Lincoln administration, and it's assumed, as uh, it often is today, that anyone who disliked Lincoln was a pro-slave advocate. I think that was hardly the case with Sheward. He was a, a Quaker, born in Ohio, but he was a constitutionalist, which may be why he called his newspaper the Constitution and Union. He uh, was particularly opposed to the draft. Uh, the U.S. government had never imposed a draft before from the federal level. The, the, federal government couldn't reach into a community and pluck someone out of it and force him to serve in a war. Anyone who discouraged enlistments in particular uh, was subject to arrest. He and uh, Dennis Mahoney at the Dubuque Herald uh, were vehemently opposed to the, uh, to the draft and pointed out that it was, uh, it was inherently unfair to the poorer people in society. And he did, uh, in one instance, call Lincoln King Abraham. And it was the U.S. Marshal of Iowa, who happened to be a rabid Republican, Herbert Hoxie, gathered a bunch of affidavits from critics of Mahoney and uh, had him arrested. And immediately after, he had David Sheward arrested. It's kind of strange that Sheward and Mahoney were criticizing the Lincoln administration for dictatorial practices, and then the Lincoln administration proved their point by arresting them for having said so. They were taken to Washington along with a couple of uh, editors from Illinois uh, who had been particularly critical and particularly effective, and they were kept in Washington in the old Capitol prison we have some letters from Mahoney that describe their conditions, and he talks about how the, the bed had very little straw and they were not given much to eat. Sheward and Mahoney were released from prison after three months, and so Sheward comes back and he continues to publish. Sheward kept his newspaper going, but later in, in the war, in 1863, as another political campaign was uh, about to begin, a mob of furloughed soldiers uh, on, on leave because they had re-enlisted for the rest of the war, came to his office and basically destroyed his presses and his forms and made it impossible to continue working. They threw the type through the window. They even assaulted Sheward himself. Junkin, who was of course Sheward's business enemy, uh, did write that this was a sad thing, that what happened to Sheward should not have happened. Sheward went on after the war to start other newspapers in Iowa, but the, the most important one, at least in historical terms, 
was the Constitution and Union, and ironically, there are none of those left for us to look at. And uh, for that lack, we can, we can thank those patriots of the Lincoln administration who uh, preserved the Union, preserved the Constitution, uh, and preserved freedom of the press all the while destroying those newspapers that opposed them.